Welcome to the Apostolic Church of Jesus Christ. We had a rich program, Passover celebration, and we continue with a Passover celebration with a sermon on the Lord Jesus, who is our Passover, passing on the other side, passing from death unto life. Let us pray together before we study the Word of God. Father God, we thank you for the time together to study your word, to come before you, humbly asking you to bless your people with your word, with divine revelation, so that everyone will have a personal illumination of what Christ has done for us as our Passover. Thank you, Lord, that you died for us and you, given, you have given us eternal life. We believe in eternal life, receive eternal life by receiving you, Lord, by saying that I believe with my heart and I confess with my mouth that the Lord Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life. He is my Passover. Amen. I'm going to be reading from 1 Corinthians 5, 7. 1 Corinthians 5, 7 to see who, not just what, but who is our Passover. Purge out 1 Corinthians 5, 7. Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lamp, and as, as ye are unleavened, as you are unleavened. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Verse 8. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Father, thank you for blessing your word in our hearts. Purge out, therefore, the old leaven. We know that uh, Passover was preceded by the feast of the unleavened bread, and uh, people were supposed to remove all leaven from their house, and leaven symbolizes sin, and that is the very reason we use unleavened bread in our uh, Holy Communion, because we believe that Jesus Christ lived a sinless, perfect life, and therefore we celebrate with a new uh, anointing, with a new life in Christ Jesus, and therefore purge out the old leaven that he may be a new lamp. Everything in our lives should be based on the new creation in Christ Jesus. Christ made a new man in us, and we are born, born again on the inside of us. Second Corinthians 5, uh, 17 says that, Behold, if anyone is in Christ Jesus, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things are become new. We have a new spirit, same physical body, but we have a brand new man on the inside, born again, thirsty after the things of God, hungry after God's righteousness, and seeking the spiritual things of the Word of God. Therefore, the Lord says, celebrate Passover as the new man in Christ not with, all, with the old habits or traditions of men, as you are unleavened. Christ has removed leaven out of your life, has removed sin away from your life, and you are unleavened. For even Christ, our Passover. So who is our Passover? Christ is our Passover. So Passover is not about a day. It's not about uh, traditions. It's about a person, specifically the person of Jesus Christ. Christ is our Passover and he was sacrificed for us. Let us keep the feast. Which feast? We keep Christ, we keep Passover. Because if we do any, anything else beyond that, we don't keep the Passover. Because Jesus has fulfilled the Passover. It is one of the feasts of the Lord that Christ has fulfilled. Christ Jesus has fulfilled 
the seven, the first four uh, feasts of the Lord, and he is coming back to fulfill the next three of the total of seven feasts of the Lord. So if we keep Christ, we keep the Passover. And since people are celebrating Passover or Easter, as it is known nowadays, let's take the chance and show who really is the Passover and what really is the Passover, what really is Easter. Christ is our Passover. Christ is the one who took us from death unto life, from sin unto holiness, from sickness into healing, from sorrows and afflictions into joy unspeakable and full of glory. We've said this in the past, but since we are studying the messianic prophecies and the first coming and the second coming of the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, in the Old Testament, there are over 300 and about approximately 330 uh, prophecies concerning the first coming of the Messiah in the Hebrew scriptures that is known to us as the Old Testament. And 109 of them are very obvious, very distinctive, and very exclusive to the person of the Lord Jesus Christ, meaning out of the 330 that Christ has fulfilled, the 109 are so clear, crystal clear, as we can say, that speak about Jesus so clearly, no one can miss it, even Jewish people who chose to reject him. And we pray and stand for Israel, and we pray that all Israel shall be saved. Romans eleven twenty six, And we thank the Lord for the last years that uh, thousands have come to know Jesus Christ as their Lord in Israel. We are so grateful for that because we are a church that blesses Israel. We are a church that we recognize that we've been engrafted. We, the wild olive tree, have been engrafted unto, onto the good olive tree, which is Israel. We have not replaced Israel. We have been engrafted on the good olive tree, which is Israel. All Israel shall be saved. And this is our prayer that the Jewish people we will, will realize that uh, all of these 330 prophecies in the Old Testament are fulfilled by the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, there are about 500 more of this in the New Testament about the second coming of the Messiah in the Hebrew Scripture that is in the Old Testament, the New Testament. So we are talking about 800 plus prophecies concerning the first and the second coming of the Lord Jesus. So uh, it is so powerful to study uh, the fulfillment of all these prophecies by one person, Jesus Christ. Nobody could have done this except God. No one can prophesy hundreds of years in the future and then come and fulfill all of them. The odds, somebody said, of only eight out of all these many prophecies being fulfilled accidentally in the life of one person is statistically known as one in 10 to the 17th power or one otherwise known as one in 100 quadrillion, not 100 million or, or 100 billion, but 100, qu neither 100 trillion, but 100 quadrillion. Such a fulfillment is beyond the realm of possibility. Uh, statisticians mention a certain number, very low, uh, and they say above this number, it is statistically impossible, meaning it's impossible 
to happen. Statistically, we get the numbers one in 100 quadrillion. These are just numbers, but above a certain number, much, much, much lower than this, statisticians say it means impossible. So it's nothing short of a miracle of how the Lord Jesus came and fulfilled and he's fulfilling all of those prophecies of his second first coming and his second coming. If the Lord Jesus promised that he would rise from the dead and manage to honor and keep his promise, don't you think that he's well able to and he will indeed manage to keep his promise that he would come back to get us to heaven where he is and where he has promised he would prepare a place for us? It's the Lord Jesus who said, I'm going there to prepare a place for you. I don't need a better comfort than this in this life. We all realize how bad it is to be socially distant, distanced and uh, socially isolated. Nobody likes that. In fact, uh, I've seen an article lately that they say um, isolation and uh, those who come out of social dis distancing and isolation show the same effects. They leave the same uh, print in, the, uh, in, in our brain like uh, when somebody is hungry. So in the same or in a parallel way, we are hungry for physical food. We're also hungry for uh, social um, relations with other people. We are social beings and we need to be with each other. Uh, so how much important it is for us to realize in such a difficult time of isolation, there is no better comfort than the Lord Jesus' words that he will come back to receive us to be with him and that he went already there in heaven to prepare a place for us, meaning that today as we speak, you and I speak, if Jesus is indeed our Passover, if Jesus is really the Lord of our lives and we have repented of our sin, judged our sin, uh, hated sin with all of our heart and turned from sin in, unto holiness by the power of the Holy Spirit, if we named Jesus Christ our Savior, and Redeemer, the absolute Lord of our lives, then He's our Passover. He's the reason we celebrate. He, uh, he passed us from death unto life, from sickness unto healing, from fear uh, unto boldness, from darkness unto light, and He's coming to pass us from this life to eternal life. We already have eternal life eternally from now, but uh, there is specifically uh, a, a city called New Jerusalem. God says in the book of Revelation chapter 1, 21, he says, uh, he mentions new heavens and the new earth and the new Jerusalem. He's preparing a place for us. So praise the Lord for this specific place that he comes to take us to be there, to pass us from here to there, another Passover, and an, uh, one more time, Jesus will be our Passover to pass us from this life to the other one. And listen to his very words that he mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter 14, the first three verses. John 14, 1, 2, and 3. Let not your heart be troubled. In the Greek, mi tarasesto imonigardia, which means do not allow in any way your heart to be troubled. It is in the imperative, it is a commanding 
uh, it is a commanding uh, a commandment of the Lord. It's something done in a very direct, imperative way. And it says, do not allow your heart to, to be troubled. Let your heart be troubled in no way. You believe in God, believe also in me. Because Jesus Christ is the revelation of God to us. And Jesus Christ is the Word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the, wor and the Word is God. John 1.1 1, 1. In my Father's house are many mansions. Not just little houses, little huts. In my Father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. The Lord takes go, goes the extra mile with us to reconfirm, to reassure us that what he says is indeed the truth. We shouldn't need the Lord to reaffirm it to us, but he does it anyway because he wants us to be sure. He doesn't want to reassure himself. He wants to reassure us. He's the beginning and the end. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the truth. So he tells us the truth. If it were not so, first of all, Jesus never lied. So whatever he said is truth. And he said, if it were not so, I would have told you. So let this sink in your heart and realize the Lord Jesus wants to get our attention, our focus. Let's focus on the comforting words of the Lord Jesus. He says, I go to prepare a place for you. As if it was not enough what he has already done for us. He went to heaven to prepare a place for us. Why? I mean, heaven is beautiful. Heaven is wonderful. Heaven is exotic. Heaven is marvelous. Heaven is magnificent. But heaven really is heaven because the Lord is there. And verse 3 says, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Not unto your mansion, unto myself. That where I am, there ye, there ye may be also. Yes, we will have a mansion. Yes, we'll be, we will be super uh, superbly and super comfortable, luxuriously comfortable in our mansion, but we will be there for him. In fact, we will enjoy Jesus more than anything in heaven. We will enjoy God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, the Holy, Holy Three in one. Holy, Holy, Holy is the Lord our God. We will enjoy our God and we will have personal relationship with the Father, the Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the Three in one. We believe in one God, in Trinity and Trinity in unity, neither confounding the persons nor separating the substance. One God, three persons, and we will have communion with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We will be fulfilled. As it is says in Colossians 2.9, that in Him, in Jesus Christ, dwelled all the Godhead bodily in him, in the Lord Jesus Christ. And in verse 10, it says, and you are fulfilled in him. So if in him is the fullness of the Godhead and he lives in us, then we will be fulfilled in the triune God. The Godhead is in us. The Godhead will be revealed to us. In John 14, 23, the Lord Jesus says, If you love me and love my words, the Father and I, we, we will come and make our abode in you. 
So who is in us? The Father and the Son. What are we called in 1 Corinthians 3.16 and 6.19 and 2 Corinthians 6.16? We are the temples of the Holy Spirit. So who is in us spiritually? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And you are fulfilled in Him who is the head of all power and principality. Colossians 2.9 and 10. Praise the Lord. So... What makes heaven beautiful is that the Lord will be there. Passover. It was the first of three annual festivals that at which all men were required to appear, appear at the sanctuary. We know that from Exodus, you can study this at your own. If you take notes, Exodus 23 verses 14 through 17 all men were required to appear at the sanctuary the noun pesach is derived from the verb pasach to that means to pass over in the sense to spare to spare exodus 12 12 to 13 and we're going to read that passover is associated with the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the week during which leaven was rigidly excluded from the diet of the Hebrews, as it says in Exodus 23, verse, verse 15. Now let us study Exodus 12, 12 through 13, and see the meaning of the word, the, the word Passover, which is from Pasach, that means to pass over in the sense of to spare, to spare. Jesus spared our lives. Thank God we were headed, head on going to hell. And the Lord Jesus took us from that road and led us to heaven to live with him eternally. Exodus 12.12 For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment. I am the Lord, says the Lord. Exodus 12.13 And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not come, shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite you, uh, when I smite the land of Egypt, when I smite the land of Egypt. No plague come, shall come nigh or near my dwelling. Psalms 91. No plague. No plague. Now, please be reminded that what's going on out in, in the whole world, in fact, that's why it's called pandemic. It's called pandemic, pandemic, meaning, uh, and some many call it, call it a plague. And um, if you notice in Luke 21, Matthew 24, 25, and Mark 13, eschatological chapters of the Synoptic Gospels, they talk about hunger and pestilences or plagues, which is plural. Now, you know about this plague that is around, uh, in, in the, that's going on in the whole world, but there are also other plagues like the plagues of locust in East Africa and elsewhere, even in Asia and Middle East. So there are many plagues going on right now all over the world. So we are in the last of the last days. But I read verse 13 to parallelize it with what's going on today. And if Jesus is our Passover, who he is our Passover, and if we claim that we believe in the Lord Jesus, to be our Passover, he will again show his power by 
sparing our lives from this plague and that plague and all plagues also until he comes he will protect his children and the blood shall be to you the blood shall be to you what does the blood of passover is to you what does it mean to you what is it to you is it the blood of christ is it the blood of the covenant is it the blood of the everlasting covenant yes it is and the blood of jesus christ is the perfect blood of god and god has purchased us purchased his church and we are now his we are his children and he will never ever uh, pour out his wrath upon his children that is one thing i know for sure so what's going on out there is not revelation the book of revelation but it's the synoptic gospels in the chapters i referred to before and uh, after this passes we are even closer to the promise of the lord jesus to come and rescue us remember the rapture is the biggest and the most successful rescue mission ever done a daring mission and i know in whom i have believed and he is able praise the lord and the blood shall be to you the blood of passover shall be to you for a token upon the houses it's not about the houses anymore it's about our hearts the blood of jesus is about on our hearts it's on our lives where ye are wherever you are the blood of jesus is upon you if you're a child of god if you're born again and when i see the blood god always sees the blood and before that he looks for the blood i will pass over you meaning i will spare you do you see the meaning of passover as sparing also i will pass over you i will spare you and the plague shall not be upon you praise the lord the plague shall not be upon me shout it with me the plague shall not be upon me the lord will pass me over will help me to pass from uh, on the safe side praise the lord so many times we say stay safe how can i stay safe you don't know where it's coming from the only way to stay safe and praise the lord it's a good thing to say to somebody we say it also stay safe but i'll show you how to stay safe really stay safe with the blood of jesus on your heart on your life on your family on your house on your job on everything you do on our church in the name of jesus and the plague shall not be upon you the plague shall not be upon us to destroy you when i smite the land of egypt we are not the target of the wrath of god the world is the unbelievers are those who choose to take the lord out of their lives those who reject god's warnings if this pandemic doesn't serve any other purpose it serves the purpose of a warning let us be warned let the bells ring that the coming of the lord is closer and closer and the lord said when you see these things plagues and pestilences specifically lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh in exodus 12 21 then moses called for the elders of israel and said unto them draw out and take you a lamb according to your families and kill the passover and then he told them to eat the whole lamb all of the family were supposed to eat the whole lamb they were they were supposed not to leave anything behind brothers and sisters if one of you has tasted salvation in your household everybody in that household can be saved in the name of jesus take authority speak the word of god all of you eat of the lamb and eat all of it meaning 
Let the Lord Jesus Christ be Lord in all areas of your life. And I would like to close after reading these uh, powerful scriptures of comfort in our lives, comforting in our lives. Let us, uh, let us read two scriptures only. One is found in Philippians 1, 6. And it says, Philippians 1 and verse 6, Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. I'm sure God is faithful to keep us until the day. And the other verse is from 2 Timothy uh, 1.12 that says, I know in whom I have believed and I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have commanded, I committed to him against that day. I am persuaded that neither life nor death nor any other thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. I'm persuaded he will keep that which I have committed unto him. I have committed me, my family, my church, you. I have committed you. I'm praying for you that the Lord will keep you. And I'm persuaded that he can keep all of us in the name of the Lord Jesus. Happy Passover. Celebrate Passover. What is Passover? Christ was sacrificed for us. Let us celebrate the passing on the other side. God sparing us. Taking us into safety and into his eternal blessing and eternal life looking forward to the coming of the lord jesus christ for the biggest rescue mission ever the rapture of the church and he is coming very soon lift up your eyes for your redemption draweth nigh see you tomorrow morning at 10 in the morning for our last celebration passover celebration service may the lord's power and blessing and presence rest upon you Amen.